Hello everyone, welcome to Scorched Your Toys at Amoon.com's review of Arcadia's 160 scale VF0S toys as seen in the five part OVA Macross Zero. Since these are Macross branded products, you won't find them outside of Japan very easily. You won't find them at Big Bad Toy Store. But if you're shopping for anything else, I recommend BBTS. You can find a link in the comments below and by clicking through that link, you'll be helping out the channel. Arcadia began their VF0 line with Shin's VF0D in February 2015. They followed it up with Shin's VF0A in August of that same year. And then finally, in December 2015, we got Roy's VF0S. That's the regular release version. Then, several years later, we got the premium finish version in June 2018. The price had ballooned from the 34,800 yen for the regular release to 41,904 yen inclusive of tax for the premium version. So what is premium finish? Well, first, instead of getting the slick box that came with the regular release, you get a flat matte black box. There's no flip top lid. It's very, very basic. Even the tray inside, instead of being gold, is just basic brown cardboard. Everything else though, from an accessory standpoint, is exactly the same. You still get the three display stand adapters, but no display stand. There's the conformal fuel tanks for the legs, an extra pitot tube, obviously a pilot figure. There are conformal fuel tanks for the back with an extra slot in them to fit Yamato's Ghost Booster that was released many, many years ago. There are three missiles on a tree. There are four sets of those and a gun pod. On the back of the tray, you will find instructions. And with the original release, you'll also find stickers. If you are new to Arcadia's VF0 line of toys, this is probably not the review you should start with. I did a regular release VF0S review when this toy first came out, and I compared it to the original Yamato VF0 toy. Needless to say, the Arcadia toy has a number of improvements. It's a much more solid toy, better durability. Here's a picture where you can see the two in fighter mode. Actually, you can see all three of these versions in fighter mode. And you can see the difference in the markings. And the premium finish version is all about markings. So that's a lot of what I'm going to focus on here today. I am going to run through all the features. I am going to talk about pros and cons, but really we're going to be looking at the regular release and the premium finish and pitting them against each other more than anything else. So the regular release, as you could see, is a very bland looking toy. And that was my big criticism the first time through with the regular release video review. There isn't a UN Spacey Tampa printing. There aren't numbers in very many places. Uh, if, if anywhere, it's just, it, it's actually a step backward from the Yamato, which was kind of striking. So it looks plain. The sculpt is obviously very good. The toy handles very well. It's just a little boring looking. So then Arcadia gives us a premium finished version. Now, the weird thing is the ideal toy was probably somewhere between these two. Because for the premium finished version, you are paying a ton of money for a lot of tampo printing that is very, very intricate. Kind of hard to see from far away. And you would hope that just the regular release, they would have done stuff like put the UN Spacey on, put the 301 on, maybe given us the pilot name I mean, even that might be going too far. Both toys have the heat shield on the top with the VF0, which is kind of cool. Um, you've got, this is kind of a nice tampo. It's, it's larger, but you do have so much tiny intricate tampo on here. That really is hard to see unless you've got the toy right up to your face. So had they just included some of the bigger items on the regular release, it would have negated the necessity for this over the top release. So that's kind of the bummer. They've got you paying a ton of money for a lot of detail you don't need just to get those few details you really think should have been there in the first place. So let's spend a second to talk about things that haven't changed going from the premium finish to the regular release. 
These are the missiles that come with the toy. They look exactly the same on both release. They have this fun little gimmick where you can pull the missile off. So that's exactly the same. If I took these missiles, put them on the other plane, no difference there whatsoever. Another area that hasn't changed at all is the pilot figure. So we can open the canopy glass, slides up, hinges forward. Here is the pilot figure. He's nicely detailed in both the regular and premium finished versions. No real changes there. Similarly, we have a little bit of heads up display detail. There's a little plastic piece on the top that's supposed to look like glass. It's really cool. And then obviously all the painted on detail inside of the regular release version. So that nice detail work was already there and doesn't really get improved upon with the premium finish version. Now, before I go into the heavy praise of the premium finish, because it is a pretty cool painted detail, uh, both these toys do have intake covers that cover the turbines, or I should say intake fans there, uh, which is cool. One thing that didn't get added for the premium finish, which is a bit peculiar to me, is there's a little, uh, I think it's a light on the front of the landing gear door here, some sort of a marker. It's actually painted on the VF-0A toy, and it's not painted here on the premium finish, which is a little peculiar. Another thing on the premium finish that is lacking in my estimation, the front of the gun could really benefit from just a little dot of paint uh, to make it look like a deeper barrel there. Uh, but Arcadia did not go the extra mile in that regard, which I felt was a bit of a bummer. This toy does come with conformal fuel tanks, uh, at least that's what I think they are. They might have some weaponry to them too, that go in the back of the leg here. You can just pop them off, they peg right into place. There's a peg in the front and a peg in the back and a slot and a slot. It's not like it was on the Yamato toys where there was magnets involved. It really is just a pegging thing and it's a lot more secure for it. Here you can see the premium finished version with that nice UN Spacey Tampo and the regular version no dice. And the same thing happens when you look at the bare leg underneath. Very plain and boring on the regular release. Big, bold UN Spacey on the premium finish. And you can also see the premium finish has that 301 on the little finlet. Uh, so that's nice. And the 301 on the vertical stabilizers that isn't on the regular release. So there's obviously a lot of markings not on the regular release. Um, but these premium finish is going to go so far. So you got this red door here. If we flip the toy over, you have these integrated landing gear, which is cool. They are uh, a little finicky, to say the least. They collapse very flush. So cool thing, they pivot outward, which is nice. When you bring it all the way in and close the doors, they're completely flat. So reopening that door is quite a chore. You kind of have to push one of the doors in and just barely get a fingernail in to pry it up. It's very tricky, but with that door closed, you can see again, tampo, 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 tampo. A lot of good detail work. You could also see that there is a little hook for catching the landing gear or catching the landing cable on the aircraft carrier, which is pretty cool. You also have that gun that can obviously be stowed, and the gun now has a little yellow warning label up at the front, which is cool to see. Obviously some red paint apps there. The real thing that grabs most people's attention is all of the tiny no-step paintings on the top. The toy has an air brake, nothing changed underneath, but the air brake itself, a couple little no-steps and a little attachment point indicator, which is also right there and there. They're in yellow, pretty hard to see, but very nice. As you get towards the front of the plane and where the pilot is, a lot more markings. And again, it looks really good. So the premium finished version, if you can pony up for it, again, like I said, it has all of those markings that really stand out that should have been there in the first place, but it also has a lot of tiny little intricate markings that unless you're super close, you might not notice them. But when you do have them up super close, it is kind of cool to see. So the regular release and the premium finish are the exact same toy differentiated only by paint details and packaging. Uh, that means both toys have the articulated tow bar in the front, the rubber wheels, the rear landing gear are metal, 
There is a little bit of metal throughout the frame of the toy, but not much otherwise. You are definitely not paying for metal content here. There are a few problems though, and you might think even at the regular version's price point, it's a very expensive toy, so hopefully there wouldn't be many issues. And the issues there are are, I would say, uh, pretty minimal, but they're still there. The legs don't really peg into place as firmly as they should into the backpack. And that has a uh, cascading effect problem in that when those become unpegged, when you lift the toy up, it kind of seems like it's a little weak in the middle. Uh, and even with them pegged in all the way, you can see just a little bit of flex. It's nothing like it was on the Amato toy, which was pretty severe, made the toy feel sloppy. This feels like a very solid toy. It's pretty minor. But the one bigger issue I have is that the intakes don't really peg into the plate above them properly. This should be pegged in and you shouldn't see a little bit of peg sticking through. And I do, and as you handle the toy, you can pop those intakes off a little too easily, which is a shame because that was a big problem with the Amato toy. You would hope Arcadia would have done everything they could to solve that, but they didn't quite pull it off. So problem on the regular release, it's gonna be a problem on the premium finish version two again no real changes except paint apps obviously this is a perfect transformation toy it does gear walk mode very well holds together solid the only thing that's at all weird is the shape of the feet which can make it kind of odd to get it just in that right position with the leg uh, but it's not at all bad everything again nice and solid with the exception of those intake pegs that are just not holding in nearly as well as they should. If you're familiar with transformation of a VF1 toy, you're gonna to be pretty familiar with the VF0. One exception to that is underneath this hook, there is a sliding mechanism that pushes this section back out and you get a little pivoting nozzle internally. So these guys move around, little ball joints, which is almost a gratuitous touch given how recessed they are but a pretty cool feature nonetheless. Now, this is the regular version. Here is the premium finish version, and we're gonna start off a little awkward with it. I've got the legs swept all the way forward, so you can see just how aggressive an angle you can get. And if we turn the toy around, you could see the big meaty metal mechanisms of the knee, and there's a slide out extension there that helps you get that really aggressive pose. Now I've got the conformal fuel tanks on the legs on the premium finish. There you go. That's what it looks like. We do have a gun extension and the handle pops out. And you can see there's a little slot for a peg in the hand, which makes sure it stays in there pretty well as we were seeing on this toy. Now, another thing about the premium finish version that I hadn't mentioned before, if you look underneath the wings where those missiles were, there's even a little tampo at the hard points. So again, some of the detail really seems like it should have just been on the regular release toy, uh, but then you see little paint applications like that and it's just very impressive to say the least. So, you know, again, it's tiny. You have to be holding the toy to really get a feel for it, but it is something you will appreciate when you have it in hand. Let's continue on to Batroid mode. This isn't the first premium finish toy I've reviewed from Arcadia. I had their VF1S Hikaru and their 13000 SDF1 toy. The SDF1 toy stands in a kind of a realm of its own with its glow in the dark paint apps. Uh, it is truly impressive in a way that neither the premium finish VF1 or VF0 toys really are. Now you could see the difference between the two toys here. Let's rotate them both at the same time. Uh, I feel like fighter mode is where premium finish really shines. There's still obviously all the same markings in Batroid mode, but for whatever reason, Batroid mode itself is a little bit noisier. And so those markings kind of get lost a little bit visually, but otherwise still very nice. Now I did, when I had my VF1S review, manage to scratch off some of those tampos because around the intake area, there's a lot of tampo printing. Same thing on the VF1 toy. Uh, fortunately for the VF0, it has this gimmick where you can pull the hips further apart so they go in and come out. 
And when they are out, you get a lot more articulation out of that joint, which I will go over in a little bit more in a moment. Uh, so the question though is, are you really gonna be posing this toy in Batroid mode as a premium finished version? If you are, do everything you can to avoid scratching that paint on the interior. Now let's go over articulation fairly quickly. Again, the premium finish is just a reissue. I'm gonna go over with regular version so I don't scratch any paint off. As I said before, I'm a little worried about that with those Tampo prints. Head is a ball joint. You have these chest covers, which flip down, which was new when the VF0A came out. The VF0D toy does not have those. Moving down, we have a shoulder joint that rotates all the way around. We have shoulder armor that moves out of the way, which is particularly good for gear walk mode. We have a twist point right there. Moving down, we have that elbow joint, which is double jointed, so it gets us 90 degrees of movement. And you can see also a nice metal hinge inside there. Yamato had a big issue with these arms falling apart in a few different places. We have a swivel at the hand, articulated pinky, two fingers, trigger, and thumb as well, which is all good. Now you do have the ability to extend the hips out and I've got them extended out right now. If I push them in, you will see I get much less of a range of movement. So there they are out, really nice. Uh, if I push them in, it takes a lot of pressure by the way to either pull them out or push them in. Now it's right up against the body. So a lot less articulation. Also, the way the VF0 works, there's this metal fin that comes down. It really nerfs articulation of the hip here. So we do end up using the gear walk joint to bring the leg forward or back instead of that hip so much because we're running into the clearance issue right there. Now, as we go down, the knee can come back. Pretty standard amount of articulation there, but we can extend it out and get a much better range of movement. Still not amazing. You can see a little bit of a paint wear issue going on there too. Watch what happens with your kneecap. Be cognizant of the position it's in because it can really fudge things up. Also, you have a twist point there that does work better when the knee is extended, but it does work when the knee isn't extended, but you have clearance issues with the kneecap. Similarly, as we get down to the foot, the foot has the ability to wiggle left and right and go forward and back, and it works even better when you extend it out. So if you're getting really dynamic poses, extend that out. You got the forward and the back action, and you'll be able to have a lot of fun with that. And overall, you will be able to get this toy into some pretty neat looking poses. You will have fun with it. It's not the most dynamic toy out there, but it's certainly pretty good. And it's not gonna frustrate you with its inability to get that action pose. It just may require a little bit of tweaking to get there. The conformal tanks also work in Batroid mode. You can see they kind of add a little bit to the beefiness of the legs. So the question becomes, is it worth it to spend the extra amount for the markings? And obviously, you now know what the markings are. You can make that decision for yourselves. I'm really curious. Go ahead and leave me a comment and what your thoughts are on the matter. I think for most people, the regular release was sold out. It was demanding a big premium. So you might as well get the premium finished version of it for almost the same price as what the regular release was going for. Well, that's gonna be some people's logic. Other people are just gonna to continue to be frustrated with how expensive these toys were in the first place. And now they're getting even more expensive for markings that some people are gonna feel should have been there in the first place. Maybe not all those markings should be, obviously. The 301s and the UN Spaces, though, seem like a no-brainer. And if they were there, I feel like the premium finish version wouldn't have a leg to stand on. But since they're not on the regular release version, the premium finish version does pop a lot more because of that. So was it a clever marketing move by Arcadia to drop the most key distinctive uh, markings? so that they could come back and double dip later, maybe? Is that really a precedent we want these toy companies going through? Uh, it's not so hot. So now you know, now you're armed with the information, you can decide how much you're willing to spend. Check out anymoon.com for my full article. And as always, thanks for watching.